Hello Therapy Talk, welcome back. This is Pauline and that's Tammy. It is February, which means it is Black History Month. Yay! So why is Black History Month in February and why do we celebrate it in February? So let's go on a historical journey. And Tammy and I are going to be doing a lot of facts today. That means we're definitely going to be reading. So bear with us. We're not perfect and we don't memorize stuff. Okay, so for, first fact is W.E.B. Du Bois, leader, civil rights leader, and co-founder of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as NAACP, was born on the 23rd of February. And the N. AACP was founded on February 12th, 1909. Another fact, the 15th Amendment was passed on, the, on February 3rd. And so this is a right to vote for everyone. That didn't really happen. So um, the next one would be the first African-American senator, Harim R. Revels, took his oath of office on February 25th, 1870. After being refused service, a group of African-American college students remained in their seats. At a Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina, and this was in, on February 1st, 1960. And the last information I have for y'all is Malcolm X, was assassinated February 21st, 1965. So this is just a, a little piece of history I just provided for y'all. Let's talk to Tammy. Wow. That, <laughs> yeah, I had no idea that many things happened in February. But also, we need to pay homage to the queen herself. She was born in February, too. This queen? Me? So we're going to add Pauline to that list. <laughs> yes, you. Yes. And it's going to be your birthday soon, girl. I'm so happy that soon. we're yes. going to be celebrating that soon. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So what are we going to expect today? We are here to appreciate, celebrate, and admire as we're celebrating Black History Month while celebrating mental health because that's what we do. We're the mental health channel. While you're here, hit like and subscribe and share our content. That's how we get our messages out to everybody else. So we're going to highlight five prominent individuals who made a significant contribution in the mental health field. We're going to have a discussion about mental health and African American and Black Americans and then stay till the end when Pauline and I are going to have some questions and answers. So Pauline... Uh, do you have any facts? A lot of times we like to share facts with our talkers. We do. And I know I mentioned like facts in the beginning, but yes, we have more facts. <laughs> we just cannot get enough of facts. So facts. <laughs> the first one, something I want to just highlight is the fact that African Americans are more likely to experience social circumstances. Facts, right? So... This is, um, this information is from a study that was gathered in 2017, which stated that in 2017, suicide was the second leading cause of death for African Americans ages 15 to 24. Mmm, that's really sad. Um, it also states that the death rate from suicide for African American men was more than four times four times greater than African-American women, which I find that to be pretty strange, but that's that's some scary statistics and facts there. Yeah, I wonder what the the correlation is um, in, in that. Yeah, that'd be interesting to find um, out. The next fact I have is that African-Americans tend to rely on family, religious, and social communities for emotional support rather than healthcare professionals. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mental health is also stigmatized in the black or African American um, because they want to pray away the illness. Pauline, can you can you kind of share what that means a little bit? Yeah, I mean, in my like culturally for me, I come from a family where prayer is like number one. 
If you're having a hard time, go pray. Um, if you need something, if you want something, have you prayed? Yeah, so that that's usually what would happen. And I'm not against that at all. And so I can see why, like, the the phrase of pray your mental health, um, your mental illness away um, is a thing. I mean, we historically had to rely on religion and spirituality through, like, tough times. You know, so I 100% like can understand that. By the same time, if you have a cut on your hand, simple as that, you're not going to pray it away. You're not going to pray that the blood stops, right? So that's that's my my take on that. Thank you. Because I read that and I was like, I think I think I'd like to have you to expand on that a little bit. Thanks for that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about prominent people. Pauline, who do you want to highlight first? Ooh, yes. So Dr. Mamie Phipps Clark. First of all, this queen was the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in psychology from Columbia. Queen, yes. And her groundbreaking research, the doll test, alongside with her husband, was um about the impact on race and child development, which was so influential for the Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. Cool. So you said that, but what is what is the doll test? The doll test. So it's a very interesting um um research that she did. She and her husband, and I totally added the link below. Um, so check the description. The link is in there. But basically. What she did was present a black and white doll to kids. And with um, with these dolls, she asked a series of questions. One question um, was in relate in relation to like which doll is mean or which doll is um, nicer. And don't quote me on what I'm saying, but it's along those lines. And some of the African-American kids would choose the white doll. And, and so on. So towards the end, she asked this question of which dog you look like. And because some of these kids had like kind of said, um, basically the black doll is the, the bad doll. They were conflicted because now the dog that looks like them is the dog that they've basically put aside. So that was part of the test. And that was totally influential in how um, race does matter. Wow. And child development. That's very fascinating. Yeah, I can't wait to get on that link and read more about that. Yeah. It's super fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. Next person, I think, Jackie McKenney. She is a family advocate specializing in issues affecting African-American women and their children. She is a founding member of the National People of Color Consumer Slash Survivor Network, and she is a consultant to the advisor of the Center for Mental Health Services. So that yes, is another Ms. queen. Jackie. Yes, very much so. Thank you, Jackie, for your contribution. That's awesome. Yes. So I have Linda James Myers. So Dr. Myers specializes in psychology and culture. Moral and spiritual identity develop, development, ooh, tongue twister for me, healing practices and psychotherapeutic processes. She also specializes in race, gender, and class. She's known for phases of oppression. She's internationally known for her work in the development of theory of optimal psychology. She's an author and has received numerous honors and awards for excellence in research and scholarship. That's a queen. Wow, Linda. Yeah, gosh, she's a go-getter. That's awesome. Um, I'm gonna talk about Dr. Fuller. Let's get some dudes in here. So Solomon, <laughs> Solomon is a pioneering African-American psychiatrist who made significant contributions to the study of Alzheimer's disease. That was special into my heart when I read that because I'm dealing with a lot of uh, memory issues with my mom. So it was really interesting to read that. He performed his groundbreaking research in the physical changes to the brain on Alzheimer's patients. 
And Dr. Filler was one of the first known black psychiatrists to work alongside Dr. Eloise Alzheimer, who was discovered the traits of the Alzheimer's disease in 1901. So I'm guessing that might be where they got the name Alzheimer's was from That's the guy amazing. who he worked with on that. Yeah, I thought that'd be super fascinating. So that is Dr. Fuller, a.k.a. Solomon. A.k.a. We got you, Solomon. King. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Solomon. Yes, yes. So let me bring bring it in with one more person. This is Maxie Clarence Moldsby, and Dr. Moldsby was the founder of the psychotherapeutic method, Rational Behavioral Therapy. I had to take my time to say that because why not take my time? Anyway, <laughs> he made emotional self-help a legitimate focus of scientific research and clinical use. Through rational behavior therapy, he formulated a comprehensive system of cognitive behavioral therapy and counseling that incorporated how the brain works in relation to emotional and behavioral self-control. Another king. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine like being like like the founder of these things, like just the thought process and the time and the dedication it took to just to have this impact on not only the African-American world, but just mental health society overall. I just, I admire that mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that brings us to, I think, are you okay with doing some question and answer? Me being the questioner, of course. Wait. Uh, are you okay with that? <laughs> so you're about to interview me? Little kind me. of, yeah. I'm not dressed Little for you. it. <laughs> yes, you are, Queen. Yes, you are. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm ready. My dogs are barking in the background. I don't know what's going on outside my door. Okay, <laughs> so I was thinking um, some people might want to know, and heck, yeah, I want to know too. So what is the correct terminology? What do you prefer? Do you prefer black, African-American, or people of color, or something of else? And I'm sure there's something that, you know, it's personal to, to everybody. But I am asking you, Queen, what do you <laughs> prefer for yourself? You're right. I prefer to be called Queen. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, but no, in all seriousness, for me, and I think what you listed black african american or person of color they're totally all okay but on an individual basis um i prefer to be called african american the reason being is because you get to know a little bit more about me when you say african american because i was born in the united states but i grew up in ghana and so that's the two parts of me is i'm african but i'm also american because of my my roots and so that's what i prefer have i been called black yes do i get offended absolutely not and so you can ask um whomever that you're you're curious about if you know if they prefer to be called black african-american person of color which as we know um we're hearing more of the acronym bipoc if you haven't heard of that it's um, what is it? BIPOC, B-I-P-O-C, which is Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. Oh, okay. Another acronym. Oh my gosh, I can't keep these straight. Yes, acronyms are In the mental real. health word, we have so many. <laughs> yeah. No, I've not heard that. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um. So, we just come off of 2020. We know last year was like a just kind of an awful year and a lot of things like happened in our history books we're going to be reading about four years um there was a lot of divided and racial tension um what do you what do you think would be a good way to unite people um under these uncertain or as we keep hearing unprecedented times um what would help unite us i think what would help unite us is you know ironically is what you and i are doing we are taught having these you types of <laughs> having these types of conversations, <laughs> um, talking about um, difficult situations that we face personally or what we're hearing about, 
and just being there and hearing each other and understanding. Maybe you don't completely understand, but that's not what personally, that's not what I'm looking for because I don't think we can completely understand someone, but we can try to relate in through our stories, through our experiences. And to me, that's how we can um, be more united overall as human beings. Yeah. Yeah. What, what like do you that. think? How can we be more united? Um, well, I think you and I are like simpatico, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> but I could, I come from a very rural, you know, setting in central United States. And, you know, it's, 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 it's cornfields everywhere you go in Iowa. So I, I wasn't raised in a, a big city where we had a lot of cultural diversity. So for me, um, my very first like education was watching TV shows and that was my exposure. And then once I got older and went to college, I had more exposure, you know, to um, African Americans and a lot of them became really close friends. But, um, I think there's probably a lot of people in America that's like lives in rural areas and they don't have a lot of exposure or a lot of interactions with, with people of color or African Americans. So it's just a matter of, we're all people. We all bleed the same. We all feel the same. Um, but yeah, we need to be really respectful of where people come from as well. So that's my two cents worth on the cusp there. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I done? Am I out of the hot seat? <laughs> You are. You put me in the hot seat, too. You know it's dangerous because I just ramble and then I just keep looking for words as I'm talking. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me use that word and that word. So sorry. I missed a question. I was going to ask you. So what has been your experience in providing therapy as an African-American? Mm, OK, Um, I would say it's interesting. And I say it's interesting because. I didn't realize my role as an African-American therapist until I moved from Texas to Oregon. And it became more prominent because people are specifically working with me as a therapist because I am African-American, Black, however you want to phrase it. And it really puts me in a position of, okay, this is how you're showing up to people in a therapy session. They see you as black and they're working with you because you can relate to them on certain topics and they are going to be more open to share certain things. So it's pretty interesting. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty um, humbling too. And I'm honored to be in that space with people. And I think it's also courageous for them to reach out in a way that like, that's what they're saying is you are African American or you're black and I want to work with you specifically. And I'm like, wow, thank you for choosing me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you could probably provide like you, you could probably provide things that other therapists can't provide in that aspect. So it's probably just what they need. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we need more of us out there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for these uh, questions can i leave now i'm totally uncomfortable you can. wait one more question no i know although we didn't check in with each other we talked about checking in before at the beginning of our video and we didn't <laughs> when are we gonna do it right <laughs> ah. it's okay this is ben therapy talk with Tammy and Pauline. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you next week. <laughs>